Zidane writing an open letter. I'm leaving because the club aren't giving me the trust that I need. Let's go into a little more detail, shall we? I'm not abandoning ship and I'm not tired of coaching. I'm going because I feel that the club no longer gives me the trust I need. I would have liked my relationship with the club and the president to have been a bit different to that of other managers. I've contributed building the relationship with the players and the 150 people who work around the team. It hasn't been understood that a great club is also sustained by those relationships. In fact, I've even been criticized for that. It hurt me so much when I read in the press after a defeat that they were gonna sack me if I didn't win the next game. Those messages deliberately leaked to the media, created negative interference with the squad. I am not the best coach in the world, but I am capable of giving the strength and trust that everyone needs in their work, whether it's a player, a member of the coaching staff, or any employee. I know perfectly well what the team needs. Blue and exit. That's more than we've heard from Zidane in that letter and then we did five <laughs> years of him at Real Madrid. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? I mean, it's extraordinary. In, in truth, the content was um, the kind of stuff that we largely knew, the kind of stuff that we largely would have expected had he ever spoken publicly. What we didn't expect was for him never to do so, uh, at least not in these terms, at least not with this clarity, and certainly not in this rather old-fashioned approach, which is to have an open letter for a newspaper. You know, he didn't choose his Instagram, he didn't choose his Twitter feed, he went straight through it, through through the, the sports newspaper ass, and it, it's very, very direct indeed. It's very damaging, I think, to Florentino Pérez, the president, and I think it, it's, it's very telling, because almost more than giving the reasons for him leaving, what he's done, really, is, of course, give a portrait of the, of the mechanics inside the club. So, what was the point of it, Sid? Why did he choose to go so public? That's a very good question. And, and to be honest with you, it's one to which I don't know the answer. Um, it's one to which I can speculate on some of the answers, perhaps just a, a, a sense that he's so upset about it, so angry about it, that he feels, no, actually, I'm not going to let this go. I'm not going to let this look like I've just walked out on a club for a third time without reasons. I want people to know that there are reasons. I wonder if as well, it's a, it's his way of saying that, and he obviously mentions this when he says, I'm not abandoning ship and I'm not tired of coaching. It's his way of alerting perhaps future clubs that look, this isn't because I'm burnt out. It's to do with the specific circumstances of Real Madrid. I wonder as well, whether there is a, a sense of him just deciding that, well, actually, I think that people need to know what's going on at mm. Real Madrid. And, and so there, there is a series of, of, of different elements there. I must say, though, I think everybody is surprised. Um, as I say, not surprised necessarily by the content of the letter, but by the existence of the letter. So there is, of course, a vacant managerial spot now at Real Madrid. You take a look at the bookies. It's Antonio Conte who's odds on to get the job. Pochettino, of course, is <laughs> reports that he wants out of PSG at 5-2. to two. Raul, who's been working with the youngsters at Madrid at 5-1, to one, and then Ancelotti coming in at 12-1, to one, Joaquin Love at 16, Xavi Alonso at 20, uh, Rafa Benitez to return at 20-1. to one. Ali, who on that list? Well, given what we know is the current situation at Real Madrid and on the heels of what Zinedine Zidane has just said in his relationship with the president of Florentino Perez, I don't think Antonio Conte is a fit in this. <laughs> a guy who... It's, it's a car crash. Isn't it it is. It is a car crash waiting to happen. And so I, I don't see that as a match made in heaven. Uh, I mean, you got to go down the list. I don't... The situation with Pochettino is convoluted. It's complicated. Raul doesn't quite have the experience, but he would seem to be the guy that has equity with the club because he's a club legend. Did that work at Juventus with Pirlo? No, it didn't. And I keep going down the list. I would say, honestly, if I were making a decision here with Real Madrid... I would go and knock on the door of Carlo Ancelotti. Right. A man who knows this club inside and out and who has a personality similar to that of Zidane that is willing to deal with a few things here and there and kind of, kind of surf above all that and just say to himself, you know what, I'm just here to manage this talented team and make sure that this team performs out on the field. The guys above Ancelotti, I just feel like there is so much that can go wrong, <laughs> much more so than can go right. Yes, if you look at Antonio Conte, and it's a surprise that he is favourite, considering we know exactly how he wants things to be, which is the complete opposite, really, that Real Madrid will offer. Yeah, I mean, I suppose in, in part it depends 
on whether you look at this as a short-term appointment or a mid-term appointment. I think a long-term appointment just doesn't exist. I think we know that. One of the things that was very telling about what Zidane said in that letter was he talked about how he had hoped that his relationship might be different to some of the other managers. Now, look, I realise this is interpretive, but of course what he's effectively saying there is that exactly the things that he's complaining about previous managers complain about as well, that this was their experience too. And one thing is absolutely for sure, Carlo Ancelotti experienced this kind of thing. Vicente del Bosque experienced this kind of thing. Manuel Pellegrini experienced this kind of thing. Uh, you know, it goes all the way through the club. It's, it's happened to other managers. Carlos Queiroz certainly experienced this kind of thing. And so you just wonder if you look at that, and, and for example, you know, you've mentioned Ancelotti in that list there. Ancelotti knows almost as well as Zidane how things are at Real Madrid. And the question is, would he accept that? Would he accept that given the way that he was forced out last time, given the kind of things that were said about him both uh, privately and then, of course, indirectly, publicly, because of those strategic leaks that Zidane was talking about, does he really want to go back into that environment? The other question, I suppose, is whether by virtue of Zidane saying this, that forces a slight shift at Real Madrid, that maybe they think twice about some of the ways in which the media is used. They think twice about some of the things that are said about managers and that maybe they back away from, from if you like, that kind of constant whispering about managers. So that brings us to Conte. As you say, in theory at least, Conte is an accident waiting to happen at a club like Real Madrid. And yet, if you look at it from a short-term point of view, Conte does kind of fit Florentino Perez's model up to a point in that one of the criticisms that Florentino has always had about Zidane was the sense that he was too soft with the players. And you see that in Zidane's letter. Very, very explicitly you see it in Zidane's letter when he says you need a good relationship. You need a closeness between manager, players, staff, the 150 people around the club. And at times I was even criticised for that. What he is saying there is at the upper echelons of the club, fundamentally the president, but also the people around him, they thought I was too soft with the players. Now, right now, what reputation does Antonio Conte have? The complete opposite. So in the very short term, at least, that's very attractive from Real Madrid's point of view. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.